Eddie Nketiah is on his way to Crystal Palace for $25 million, rising to $30 million. Jules, does this mean that Arsenal's reserve center forwards are Gabriel Jesus and Gabriel Martinelli? When, when Martinelli's not doing his day job of, of playing down uh, out in the wing? No, I mean, you can play Trossard as well as a, as a number oh, sorry, nine. another winger, yeah. Yeah, the, but as a, a different different option, I guess. But yeah, I think the, the Enkechia transfer pays for the Marino's arrival, basically. This is what it is. They, they would not have been able to get Marino without letting someone go, unfortunately. And, and for Enkechia, I think this is a, for a player who went through the academy. And as we know, in terms of PSR, a straight in your straight in your books, straight in your accounts. This is good. There might be more uh, leaving as well before the end of the season, at the end of the transfer window. Sorry, and then that would be. A, I think that would be a good window from an Arsenal point of view. So unfortunately, yeah. Elkechia has to go, and then for Crystal Palace is another option for Glasner with Mateta and with Otton Edouard. Juventus, okay. Verona, sorry, 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 Jules, Jules, Jules. Let me finish here because I'm going sorry. to disagree with you on Elkechia. Sorry, I know, I know you're trying to shut me up. No, no, no. Sorry, I didn't hear you talking. <laughs> just kidding. Um, I don't really... I, I'm not convinced here just for one simple reason. And, you know, like you, I'm not a big Eddie and Ketia guy. But he played a lot last season. I think he started 10, 10 league games, just going from memory. He made a lot of appearances. He ate up a lot of minutes, often, you know, in the second part of the season, coming off the bench. Um, I do wonder, you know, you've covered all your bases. You have covered most positions. I do wonder if if they maybe needed to do another move or maybe are still plotting some move, even some sort of low-cost move, for the simple reason that Gabriel Jesus at center forward, I don't think satisfies anybody. Uh, and he has, got, he has a lot of injuries. Uh, if you could move Trossard there, but then Trossard's your backup um, in several other positions, you don't want to have a situation where a couple of injuries to key men really derail your season. And it happened at the back a few years ago when, when Saliba got injured. That is my big concern. So I'm wondering if he might not have something up his sleeve in the final hours of the transfer window. I alone, something like that. I don't know. Just speculating. Not a seaman, not a seaman, somebody else. Juventus be Verona 3 0 away on Monday night, Gab, for the second straight game. They got a goal from a debutant. Yes, it was um, Bangula. Uh, who comes from their next gen teams or the, their 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 B side essentially uh, in week one, and then it was uh, this guy Savona uh, on Monday night. Uh, you know, people who unless you follow the third division, um, you wouldn't be familiar with. Uh, I I I thought they played they played really well. Vlaovic looks well up for it. Um, scored a great goal. Um, they couldn't have imagined a, a better start to the season, I think. And uh, and, and, and it really builds the confidence in, in Thiago Mota. Sticking with Juve, the Teun Cope Miners deal is finally done. They have new wingers in Nico Gonzalez and Francisco Conceição. The youngsters are looking great. Kenan Yildiz has been playing well, too, and he's been starting. Jules, that's Thiago Mota shock therapy, like I said, working very nicely. How good did they actually be this season? No, I think they could be really good. I think they would challenge Inter. How far, I'm not so sure, but they certainly look like already the two best teams in, in the country. You have a top of the table, of course, perfect start. Like you said, I think the, the we maybe didn't expect them to be so good in the transfer window, which they financed by letting go some of their young talent, next-gen talent, but to have Douglas Ruiz signing, Coop Miner signing, um, as you said, Francisco Cesaro for 20 million euros. I think this is a great signing. Uh, Nico Gonzalez too. That's the wingers that Mota wanted. It's really good on 1v1. There's a bit of everything everywhere there. Even even defensively, it's good. They when they lost Chesney and Rabio, who one left as a free agent, the other one got his contract. Um, I don't know how you say rescinded. Rescinded, exactly. Yeah, but concern. they covered them quite well. Really smart recruitment, I think. And Thiago Mota already looks where he belongs kind of thing on the bench like that. So I'm I'm really excited to see how far Juve go this season and how well he gets them to play. And we haven't even mentioned the midfield. I mean, brand new Turam, uh, Kefren Turam and, yeah. and Douglas Luiz. And the alternatives there are, are Locatelli and Fagioli, who you know are still Italian internationals. Um, that's not a bad place to be. That's a really good squad. 
Claude Cancelo has joined Al Hilal for around $28 million. Gab, you're a big fan. Are you sad to see him go? Well, I'll still be watching him. I'll be, I, you know, I watch Al Hilal very, very closely. No. Um, again, it, it seems to me a victim of football, of modern times. Of, I just find it kind of depressing. I, I think he could, he can help many teams. And, but he has a big contract. Obviously, Pep Guardiola hasn't made many mistakes um, in his time at Manchester City. Yeah, I think giving Cancelo a new deal when he had no plan to use him ever again, uh, and then you know misjudging that so badly, that's going to be one of them, along with Cole Palmer, uh, obviously. Um, oh, and uh, <laughs> the, uh, Calvin Phillips, of course. Yeah, um, but there aren't too many. You know, he's gotten most things right. I uh, look, he made a deal to. Get money. I think it's a great deal for for Manchester City because I don't think anybody else was going to give you that kind of money for Cancelo at this stage. He's been burned in Europe at this stage, and so he moves on. I, I still think he's a unique talent uh, in his role, and I think he could have helped many teams. Yeah, and that's Joao Cancelo, not his brother Jose. I don't know why I called him Jose in the question, but yeah, that's, that's probably Joao. because. That's because when I wrote the script, it autocorrected to uh, Jose, so it's not your fault, uh, Jose. <laughs> Kingsley Coman wants to leave Bayern. Jules, why is he leaving it so late? What are his plans? Yeah, you're right. I mean, this it's really strange why he left it so late. I, I'm not really sure why. Uh, I think Bayern have always said, listen, if you want to go, you're welcome. Huge wages. Um, Olise arriving. Musiala is there. Gnabry is there. I think they were quite keen on letting him go. And I think maybe it took him time to, to make his mind up really between staying and, and going. The thing is, like you said, now it's really late. And the only, the only club right now that he has is in Saudi Arabia. So yesterday there were a few conflicting reports. I was, I was told that he didn't want to go. Others reported that he accepted the deal to go to uh, Ali Tihad, I think it is. I'm, I'm not sure, but I'd be disappointed to see him go over there. I think there's enough talent there for a European club to go and get him. That might mean for him taking a, a like a less money and and you know decreases his, his wages, but he can do that. He's, he's already a very very rich man. So yeah. I'm really curious to see what's next for him. I'd be disappointed if that was Saudi Arabia. I, I'll, I'll tell you what on uh, on on, on Coman. Um, I mean, obviously the market in Saudi is open uh, longer, so he doesn't need to be in a rush, but. Why doesn't he come to Arsenal on loan? He can back up Kai Havertz and give you a different dimension. He can play center forward. He's done it before, right? Uh, I don't remember him playing center forward. Oh, he's, he did it at Juve. It's not really. It's not that different. Yes, he's done it. Not particularly well, but I prefer Gabriel Jesus as a nine than actually Coman as a nine. All right. Okay. All right. But, just but, but I think there's a few clubs who could do with somebody like him. It's just, yeah, it's a bit late now to try to make that. Whatever move happened, really. After two disappointing games, Milan are scrambling at the end of the transfer window. There's talk of Salemakers plus cash for Tammy Abraham at Roma. And they're looking at another midfielder, Rabio, maybe Manu Kone. I thought Milan was supposed to be big methodical planners on the transfer market gap. What's happening? Yeah, I, this is weird, right? Because they're the smartest guys in the room and they plan and the youngsters and the analytics and, and, and Moncada, I think this is pretty uncharacteristic to yeah. have this knee jerk. I think it shows you that some of the decision makers at the club have changed. You know, Slatan, I'm not saying this, oh, it's because of Slatan, but, you know, Slatan's obviously much more involved. He's going to be part of whether it be on season is, is judged as success. Um, you know, okay, so Jovic didn't play well uh, when, when yeah. he's been on the pitch. So like, oh, look, you know, Tammy Abraham, I, sure, uh, but you knew Jovic wasn't very good. You saw him all of last season, right? I mean, the Salamakers Tammy Abraham deal, I think, is the kind of deal that could help both clubs. Fine, um, but you could have made this deal at the start of the summer, right? Um, and again, in midfield, it's not a mystery. Rabia was right. maybe you wait on him because you're right, the best possible deal. Manu Kone feels a little agent driven to me, frankly, because yeah. you know when you have a guy from abroad who who gets linked to a different Italian club. This happens all the time different Italian club every week, you know that there's somebody in Italy who has the mandate to sell them. Um, but, you know, 
We had Manu Kone in our uh, uh, draft of young players a couple years ago. Yeah, I remember. He lost his name away a little bit, but there's there's talent in there. I, I just hope these aren't knee-jerk reactions. I, I think Milan's done well being methodical with their planning and obviously some of their signings this summer, like Fofana and, and Pavlovich, reflect this. Um, this one, a little bit less so.